The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. The Equitable Life Assurance Society has nearly 8,000 trained representatives serving over 4 million members. Tonight, an Equitable Society representative has a message on Social Security. Chances are you are greatly affected by the recent changes in the Social Security law. Either you're newly covered, or if you've been covered all along, you've had your benefits greatly increased. So now is the time to take stock of your financial position. To lend you a hand, the Equitable Society has revised its famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. In 14 minutes, Mr. Keating will tell you how this Equitable chart can help. Tonight, FBI file number 296. Its subject, armed robbery. Its title, The Floating Stick-Up. Every law enforcement agency in the country receives its quota of mail from citizens demanding to know why crime has not been wiped out. Tonight's case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation has been chosen because it illustrates one of the answers to that question. There are many other answers, but they all revolve around a single truth. There are in the United States today approximately 200,000 law enforcement officers. And there are in the files of your FBI fingerprint arrest records of some seven and a half million people, or one officer for every 37 lawbreakers. Obviously, each person with a record cannot be kept under constant surveillance. The job of the police is to apprehend after a crime has been committed. But there is work to be done at the other end, the work of crime prevention. Law enforcement can help in that job, but you can help more. In fact, you must if you want crime conquered. Tonight's file opens on the deck of an ancient sidewheel showboat that is tied to a pier on a southern river. It is late evening. Actors, musicians, and members of the crew are gathered on the main deck. One member of this group, a young man in a worn, spangled uniform, walks slowly toward the cashier's counter. Good evening, Elsie. Hi, Doug. Hard, ain't it? Yeah. You do any good? Made about two dollars. Oh, Doug. All right. All right. Gather around, everybody. Oh, now we got to hear around. another one of them speeches. That's right. Gather around. Let's just stay back here. He's loud enough. We'll hear Folks, him. as captain of this vessel, <laughs> I want to thank you for making this a memorable stop in the voyage of the great River Queen. Without your invaluable help, I couldn't have sold all those bottles of my celebrated elixir. Same old stuff every time. On the turn of the tide, which is in about 15 minutes, this grand old showboat will be heading downriver. But before we embark, there are a few chores to be performed. You members of the theatrical profession, kindly report to the main deck house Acquire the necessary implements, such as mops and brooms, and clean out the main lounge. <coughs> Gentlemen of our peerless musical aggregation, kindly lay aside your instruments and report to the first mate for deck cleaning duty. And just so you folks who do the selling and collecting don't have to walk around weighted down with all that money, I'll make you mighty welcome in my cabin. I thank you. He sure enjoys making folks work. Yeah, but he don't enjoy paying for it. Well, I guess we can stand him till tomorrow night. Then we can get off and get home. Say, Doug, look at there. Hmm? 
about somebody shinnying up that hawser line, trying to sneak on the boat. Now, why do you want to be doing that? Most folks try to sneak off. Should we give him a hand? What for? He's making it. See? Made it fine. Hi there. What? Were you looking for something? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was aboard for the show. Forgot my hat. I come back to get it. You picked kind of a hard way, didn't you? Especially since the gangplank's still down. I didn't see it. Excuse me, I'll go look for the hat. That's a funny way to look for a hat. I don't think he was saying one truth about looking for his hat. Hmm? I'd say he was looking to get away from trouble. Meanwhile, at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is at his desk writing a report. Special Agent Taylor. Hello, Jim. This is Paul Sherman. Hi, Paul. I uh, got a message that you called me. Yeah, that's right. We've got a fugitive case, Paul, and I figured you boys out at the state police could help us. Well, who are you looking for? Name is Eddie Kendall. He's a safe cracker. From the information we've gotten, he's headed for your part of the state. Any description? Yes, complete with picture. You can get it from our I.O. It's number 13845. 13845. Dated July 7th, 1950. Okay, okay, I'll have copies given to every highway patrolman. Fine, Paul. He uh, stole a car in Decatur City, might still be using it. It's California license plate uh, 86W for water, 349. Say, so, wait, wait a minute. A black convertible? Yeah, that's right. He's been here already, Jim. When? Tonight. He cracked a safe in a jewelry store over in Stewartville. Oh, how much did he get? Nothing. The watchman came in while he was working, and Kendall ran. He mm. got away in that car. Paul, is there any plane service tonight to your place? No, but the 11.30 train will put you in here the first thing in the morning. Fine. I'll be on it. Folks, I've got just a few words to say to you. Before the mighty River Queen pulls into the dock for another day's engagement, I regret to state that the last couple of stops we've made, you've all been a mite too honest. I can judge that by the insufficient number of complaints I had from the customers. Now, just bear in mind one thing. No matter what size bill you get, Give the customer change for a single and keep moving. Then there's the subject of the customer's wallet. I'd like to see you find more of them, even if it is out of the gentleman's pocket. Don't forget, you keep 50% of all you find. That's ahead, Captain. Oh, fine. All right now, disperse and prepare to assume your duties. Strike up the van. Yeah? Look it over there. There's that fellow we seen climbing the rope last night. Yeah, I know. I was just going over the top time. Hmm. Captain must have gave him a job. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wonder why he stayed on. Well, I think I know. You see, I stayed on deck after you went below. Hmm. Well, what happened? You'll find out when I talk to him. Hi there, mister. Oh, hello. Having kind of a hard time finding your hat? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. What about? A while after you climbed on last night, two fellows came up the gangplank. Turned out to be the police. So? They wanted to know if I'd seen anybody come aboard. Said they were looking for a fellow. From what they said about him, how he looked, that fellow was you. You mean he was running from the law? You want to answer that, mister? None of your business. Oh, now, look here. I ain't saying none of this to make trouble for you. I, I just wanted you to know that I know who you are. Is this a shakedown? Not at all. All right, everybody. Prepare to greet the citizens. I'll see you later, mister. We'll do some more talking. Jim. 
Hello, Pa. Thanks for meeting me. Hey, in progress on Kendall? Well, we haven't located him, but we found his car. What, here in Stewartville? Yeah, yeah. It was parked in an alley down by the riverfront. Oh, when'd you find it? Last night, right after you called. But no leads on Kendall, huh? <sighs> nope. You think he's still here in town, Pa? Could be. No other car was reported stolen. And abandoned down by the riverfront, huh? Could have taken a boat. Well, we checked on that. No boats reported stolen either. Mm -hmm. I assume you set up a search through that section. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but we didn't get a lead. Mm -hmm. uh, come on, Jim. My car's down this way. We'll go to my office and you can look over everything we've done up to date. Hi, mister. Hi. Like to finish off that talk we were having. Look, if the captain says you, will get fired. Me and Elsie are quitting tonight anyway. We're going back country to her place. That's part of what I wanted to talk to you about. Maybe you can help make our quitting turn out good. What do you mean? I told you the police last night were telling stuff about you. They said you were a real good hand at opening safe. Well, is that a fact? Uh-huh. That might be real helpful to Elsie and me. How? Well, Captain Jefferson, he's got a safe right here on the River Queen. Want to hear some more? Go ahead. I've heard that that old safe is just stuffed up with money. Seems the captain don't believe in banks. Want more? Keep talking. Now, if tonight you was to kind of open up that safe, then we could all three of us quit here together. It'd turn out fine for you, mister. Elsie's place back country is real quiet. As long as you're trying to hide for a while, that'd be a spot to do it. Where is the safe? In the captain's cabin. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, it's an old beat-up one. Is the cabin locked? Yeah, but I just happen to have me a key. When's he most likely to be out of the cabin? He's on deck most all of every evening. Now, how about it, mister? We'll do the job tonight. We got a lead, Jim. Oh? What is it, Paul? A man just called in, said he saw Kendall last night going aboard a showboat that was docked at Pier 3. Last night? Uh-huh. How come he waited till now to report? Well, he'd been down river in his motor launch. When he got back, he saw Kendall's picture in the paper and came on over. That showboat's still here, Paul? No. No, it pulled out about midnight. Well, didn't anyone from your force, the local police, search it? Well, my men did question someone on this showboat, and they stated positively that Kendall had not come aboard. Ah, it's too bad you couldn't have searched the boat, Paul. Jim, there were 58 boats docked along the river last night. We just didn't have enough manpower. Any idea where the showboat was headed? Down river. That means they're probably pulled into Centerville, Riverton, or Montgomery. Uh -huh. The switchboard's calling the police in those places. Okay, the minute you're located, let's get moving. How you coming, mister? Yeah, I'll have it open in a minute. Is it harder than you thought? No. It's just rustier. Yeah, hold that light a little closer with you. Sure, I'll just... Oh, look out. You know, every place you go in here, you stumble over another mess of elixir bottles. How's the light now? Yeah, that's better. Dad. Dad. Come in. Dad. What is it? I think I hear the captain coming. What'll I do? Just like we told you, stall him off. We got this thing almost open. But I won't know what to say. You go on out with her. Just keep him from coming in here. Okay. Now, what makes you think the captain... All right, gentlemen. Mr. Howard, will you kindly tell the salesman that I'll be right back up with some bottles of elixir? Oh, okay. And kindly see to it that the band keeps playing in my absence. Say, what are you two doing down here? Well... Why aren't you upstairs working? We come down to tell you about an accident. Accident? Yeah, a man up on deck bought a bottle of the elixir and drank the whole thing right down. Well, what's wrong with that? As soon as he finished it, he keeled right over. Ah, where is he now? Playing right where he fell. You better come up and see him, Captain. Very well, I will. Bottles. 
Somebody's in my cabin. That noise didn't come from your cabin, Captain. Somebody's in there getting drunk on my elixir. Now, wait, Captain. Now, just stand out of my way. Uh-huh. I thought so. What are you... My safe. You ain't been at my bottles. It's my safe. Why, you... Oh. Good work, kid. Old Captain won't think so. He'll be real mad when he finds out that was a dollar-sized bottle. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now, a very timely announcement on Social Security from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Last August, President Truman signed the revised Social Security law, increasing benefits by 50 to 100 percent and adding millions of new names to Social Security roles. Naturally, the first question anyone asks is, how does this affect me personally? What benefits would my family get if I should die? To help you answer that question intelligently, the Equitable Society's famous fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers has been completely revised to take into account the changed Social Security picture. What you do when you get the chart is very simple. You imagine that the wage earner of your family has died. No more weekly paychecks coming in. But your wife and children still have to eat. They still need clothes, shelter, education. How much will all that cost? The fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers will give you a reliable and accurate answer. With their new Social Security benefits, how many additional dollars will they need every week to be well-fed, well-housed, well-clothed until the youngest child finishes high school? In five minutes, the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers gives you an answer you can trust, guides you every step of the way with simple, easy-to-understand pictures. Once you have the facts before you, you can plan intelligently. Chances are that with your present life insurance and your new Social Security benefits, only a small amount of additional life insurance will mean complete security. Your equitable representative will be glad to work out a sound and economical program for you. In any event, the first step is to ask him for a copy of the revised fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. No charge, of course, and no obligation. So get in touch with your equitable representative soon. All right, care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E Q U I T A B L E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file The Floating Stick Up. Each week, this program tries to advise you how to help fight the menace of crime. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI offers a graphic illustration. The robbery you have just witnessed could have been avoided. Had the local and state police been able to put enough men on the job, Eddie Kendall would have been discovered aboard the showboat. However, as you heard, that needed manpower simply wasn't available. Nor is this case any exception. Throughout the country, there is an average of less than two police employees for every thousand people. And among employees are grouped not only men in uniform, but also clerks, stenographers, and other civilian employees. The number of uniformed officers, therefore, is probably closer to three for every 2,000 people. That is not enough. You can remedy the situation, but only you can. See to it that you're aware when budget meetings are held by your elected local officials. Attend those meetings. Municipal budgets reflect the interests of the citizens. To fight crime... Make one of your interests an adequate local police force. Tonight's file continues aboard the showboat. Special Agent Taylor has just finished interviewing Captain Jefferson in his cabin and is returning to the upper deck. Oh, Jim. Oh, yes, Paul. Get anything? Yeah. Yeah, I learned that Kendall and two other people stole a small boat from the next pier. Now, when? About 40 minutes ago. Well, that other couple's name is Wheeler. They were in on the robbery. Captain tell you this? Yes, he also gave me some background on the Wheelers. Says he found out the man is wanted for draft dodging. Where'd he learn that? It's passed on to him several days ago by a member of the crew. Well, then why didn't he notify the police? Oh, Paul, I don't think the captain runs a very legitimate business here. I have an idea he rather welcomed a law evader. It would ensure the fact that he'd shortchanged the customers. I guess you're right. The squealer lives someplace around here. Captain said he planned to come this far and then go home. Did he know where home was? No. Paul, I'm going to go ashore and call my office, see if I can find Wheeler's address. If he is a draft dodger, we should have a record on him. 
We getting near your place yet? About another five miles. We'll get there before dark, all right. You mean it's still daylight? Sure, sure. Can't you tell? Now, with that moss hanging off everything. What'd you do with the money? That's right there in the back. Man, I sure never figured we'd get that much. $3,800. That's a mess of elixir. Hi, what's that? Food. We must have scared them. Yeah, and vice versa. We didn't scare them. They seen some gators. You mean alligators? Mm-hmm. Tell me, do you people live in a house or a tree? It's a house. We still got five miles to go? That's right. I'm crawling under this blanket. Call me when we get there. I talked to my office, Paul. Wheeler is wanted for draft dodging. Do they have an address on him? No, nothing current, but his record shows he was born in Waterville. Waterville? Well, that's back country from here. No, how far? About 20 miles. Can you get to it by boat? A small boat. Like the one the wheelers store? Yeah, sure. Paul, how long would it take them to get up there? At least a couple hours. And how long would it take us to drive? Oh, it's a good road, less than a half an hour. Okay, let's alert the Waterville police. If we get lucky, we could meet the wheelers and Kendall when they dock. Shh. I'm counting the money. Sixteen, seventy. We ain't eight. got no coffee. I told you to hush up. Ten, twenty. Hi, mister. Hi. I thought you was going to get some sleep. Uh, I couldn't sleep. Will you two shut up? I'm trying to count. Forget that. I want to talk to you. Well, look, you got your share of the money. Now let me count mine. I want to get out of here. Huh? This just ain't my kind of action. I thought you wanted some place to hide out. Sure I did, but not with wild birds and crocodiles. Alligators. All right, whatever they are, I can't handle them. So how about taking me back? Can't do it, mister. Well, why not? You know what happened on that show, Bo. We got to do some hiding ourselves. That was strictly a local job. I don't care what it was. We're staying here. You want to leave, you go ahead. How? You use the boat. It's right outside. I don't know how to run a boat. Just turn the motor on. Well, how would I find my way? You're on a creek. Just go where it goes. Now, if you're leaving, leave now. Okay, I will. No point in waiting on this dock, Jim. We're on a cold trail. Oh, why? Well, the police here in Waterville had an arrest record on Wheeler. They gave me the address, but the whole family's moved. Any idea where? Nobody knows. How long have they been gone? Oh, a couple of years. And none of them have been back since. Mm. All anybody could tell me about Wheeler was uh, he's married. Now we knew that much. They also remembered it was a noisy wedding. Maybe they went to his wife's place. No, she's not from around here. Nobody remembered her maiden name. They know where she came from? Henderson County. That's the next one over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the biggest in the state. See, if I remember the map, the river runs all through Henderson County. Splits it right down the middle. Well, then they could be heading for her house. But we don't know where she lives, what part of the county she's from. We don't even know her name. No, but we might be able to get that dope right here in Waterville. Come on, Paul. All done? Mm-hmm. That's 19 of them hundreds. That makes uh, $1,900. Tall, ain't it? Where are you going to hide it, Dud? Hide it? Well, sure. You can't just Quiet. leave it... Huh? Somebody coming up on the porch. Give me that sack. Here. I'll just put this money away. Who could it be? No. Well, stay there. Who is it? Me. Oh. All right, step back. 
Huh? There's a gun I got here. Now step back. What do you want? You're taking me down a creek to the river. I told you you were welcome to the boat. I can't even start it. If I did, I'd get lost. Now, come on. I... Knock the gun out of your hand. That was kind of a mean trick you pulled. Elsa, give me your gun. Here. Now, you you go look outside the front door and see if there's a bag there. Now, wait a minute. Now, just stay put, mister. There is a bag out here. Well, fetch it in. This his share of the money? Was his share. Belongs to us now. No, you can't do that. Who's got the gun? Now, you turn around, mister. We're going to take a little walk. You so set on getting away from here, I'm going to give you the chance. Dud, you letting him go down the creek? Yeah, but not in the boat. When he gets tired of swimming, he can stop and talk to the gators. What? Now, get moving, Mr. No, get no, wait, moving, wait. Now, no, wait, wait. Come on, wherever you are. Cops! Right. Get the guns, for. Right. You're all under arrest. Eddie Kendall was tried and convicted in federal court on a charge of armed robbery and transporting a stolen car across the state line. He received a sentence of five years. Dud Wheeler was tried in federal court and convicted of violating the National Selective Service Act. He also received a five-year sentence. His wife, Elsie Wheeler, was sent to federal prison for six months for harboring a federal fugitive. Special Agent Taylor and Inspector Sherman arrived at the shack on Sugar Creek in time because Elsie Wheeler's maiden name and address both appeared on the marriage license, a document on file in Waterville, Wheeler's former residence, since that was where the wedding had taken place. Tonight's case could not have been closed as quickly as it was without the splendid cooperation received from the state police, cooperation similar to that extended to special agents by law enforcement officers throughout the country. Those men aid each other constantly, for they are not competitors, but fellow professionals, all with the same job, protecting the life, the property, and the liberty of you, the decent citizens of America. In just a moment, you will hear about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, another quick message from our Equitable Society representative on the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. If you're like most fathers, when you heard about this free Equitable chart, you said to yourself, that's for me. Well, this chart is for you. And right now, revised to fit the changes in Social Security, it can be mighty helpful. So don't delay. Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative. Or send a postcard care of this radio station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. File number 297, its subject, Manhunt. Its title, The Jungle Killer. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Anthony Barrett, Sam Edwards, Isabel Jewell, Wally Mayer, and Henry Morgan. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Jungle Killer on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet next on ABC. You'll enjoy your half hour with the Nelsons. That's Ozzie and Harriet coming right up over most of these same ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.